our friend Maverick, he said he was in the Navy, and I was like, oh, what is that, the gayer version of the Army? And he goes, he goes, you know, I could kick your ass. I was like, yeah, there's tons of gay dudes that can kick my ass. <laughs> you, think, you think kicking my ass doesn't prove my point? That's what a gay guy would say if he wanted to kick my ass. <laughs>
Man. What were the other times you stole Valor? Next time I stole Valor that I remember <laughs> is I had, uh, I was doing pills, right? I was doing pills and I took yes, a sir. flight from Austin to Sacramento and I wanted my dog on the flight. So I got one of those ESA tags that you could get offline at the time so you could sit with your dog. Sat with my dog on the plane flight. Lady sits next to me and said, oh, he's such a sweet dog. For no reason, I said, yeah, it was issued to me by the VA. I hate you issued so much. Issued to me by the VA, <laughs> and she said, why? And I said, seizures. <laughs> I said, I said, and this also this dog was also, <laughs> oh my also with me overseas. <laughs> She thanked me for my service. She was, bu she was buying me those little drinks that they, they sell you, those little mini bottles. Yeah, little bangers, the yeah. little the little doers, whiskeys. Yeah, absolutely. And I was, you know, I was just drinking to forget. <laughs> I was just drinking. I was drinking to forget. You know. What a beautiful thing you gave to that woman. She thought that she was being helpful. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what? In this story, I am the hero still. You know what? You did a good deed that day. I did. You gave that alcoholic woman in coach mm -hmm. the ability to feel <laughs> like a, I, I gave I gave to a service. <laughs> I give a lot to charity, but I don't, I wonder if they're even getting any of it. And I know today that serviceman with seizures, <laughs> I helped him. It's crazy that she wasn't like seizures. You, you seem crossfaded on Xanax and alcohol right now. <laughs> there's, there's no way that's good for your for your seizures, right? She didn't question it. She just let me cruise. I, honestly, I don't remember it, but I probably told her fake war stories. She goes, she goes seizures. You keep screaming ASAP. <laughs> you keep you keep high fiving me like this. <laughs> I think it's funny that anyone would believe I was in the military. Especially, like, I, I worked the door for this for a while with these two Marines. And what, some one time, this other Marine came in, and we knew he's a Marine because he had the Marine logo on the hood of his car, which is, like, a little bit cringe, but if you're super into the Marines, that's... dude, no problem. I, you know, if I was into something like that. So he walks up, and the other guy's talking about how the Marines. And I go, yeah, I was a Marine, too. And the guy that pulled up in the car looks at me and looks at them, and they go, <laughs> like that. And he goes, oh, yeah, and ask me some Marine question, like, blah, 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 where did you blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, I was like an E-40 or whatever. And he was like, oh, yeah, so you Marine. And the reason this guy gets mad is because he thinks I have these other two Marines tricked, and he's trying to, like, <laughs> he's trying to convince them that I'm actually stealing valor. But these guys aren't idiots and have worked with me, and, and so they obviously know. And even if they didn't, they, they know probably, you're fucking with him. Yeah, they'd probably find out pretty soon, hey, this fat guy who just smokes weed out front, he's not actually a fucking Marine like we are. The guy who's five-fingering his belly button. <laughs> <laughs> is not a my manager was the coolest he was a marine but he was a marine for like 30 fucking years he was marine forever served Ugh. in like uh south america and bolivia training tons of had the craziest stories was such an interesting guy the sweetest dude in the world and watching him nod along being like no i i think he was really a marine man was the funniest thing in the world to me I those are the three memorable times i've also pretended to be jewish enough times i don't know if that counts as stealing pause power. welcome to bad news everyone <laughs> welcome to bad news podcast <laughs> Is there any better way? Yeah, so I've stolen military valor. I've also pretended to be Jewish. <laughs> and autistic. <laughs> Pretending. Okay, I'm Sam, <laughs> I'm Sam Castillo. This is the Bad News Podcast. With me always is... JT Kelly. And of course, you know it, our what's, producer. What's up, Jimmy? Let's get back in it. And you pretended to be Jewish. one of the tribe. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Chosen. King of the tribe, if you will. First time I pretended to be Jewish, I was coming out of the Highland Mall a mall that's half community college, half mall, and I got an A, grill. And I got the grill on the front three teeth like that. Oh, that kind of grill. Little little grill like that. And Dude, I, was, I love that for you. It was a great look. It uh, was like ages 21-ish to 23, I was a grill guy. Oh, I love that. It, it was a pretty sick vibe, I'll I met be you honest. right after the grill then. You probably met me when I was wearing the grill on and off. Maybe on and off. I still have it somewhere too. It's a very shitty eleven Is it just to flex grill. some people, or what's the point of the grill? Honestly, I just thought it was cool. It was only like hundred twenty bucks, and I thought, yeah, worst case scenario, I don't wear a grill. Best case scenario, I wear a grill sometimes. It signals to a type of woman that I can afford cheap shiny yeah. shit. Hey, I have hundred twenty <laughs> bucks sometimes. <laughs> now, does it mold specifically to your mouth? Oh yeah, I went in and I bit a thing, and it was great. I felt like, ugh, it was an absolute spa day. But when I got it, <laughs> put it on, walked out, and yeah. when I was getting to the parking lot, this older black guy stopped me and said, are you Jewish? And I said, yes, how could you tell? And he said, the gold in your mouth. <laughs> and I, I thought, okay, okay. And I pretended to be Jewish there, 
And then, um, so and wait now, a minute, you just, you only pretended to be Jewish to receive an anti-Jewish remark? Yeah, absolutely. I said, I'm going to take one for the team. I love Jews. I love, if people are going to throw Jew hate, I'm standing in front of them going, uh-uh. I'm like Jesus. Put him on the cross. I would say I'm the Jesus of Jews. <laughs> <laughs> if that's how I would consider myself politically. I'd be like, I'm the Jesus of the Jews, if you will. Forgive them, Father. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. If you're going to throw anti-Semitic hate, I stand in the way, dude. I get in front of that tribe. I say, direct it at me. I can take it. They've taken enough. All right? That's how I stand up for my Jewish brothers and sisters. That's correct. Also, I had a customer at a, at a coffee shop. I think I was Jewish and I went with it and turns out she was Jewish and I pretended for too long. I don't know if she ever caught on, but uh, I know the Shema or a little bit of it. I can go Shema Yisrael Adonai Elohim Adonai Chad. And it's not good, but if you don't really know Hebrew, that's close enough, right? Sure. A lot of Jews don't actually know Hebrew. Yeah. So I spit that out and then Jews kind of back out and like, oh yeah, no, you're more Jewish than me. Damn, he's a Marine. Hey, we're the same. <laughs> we're, I'm the, you call me the bear Jew, baby. I was in the army over there fucking fighting bad guys for our team. That's what, I, that's what I'll say to anyone. I say, what army are you in? He goes, uh, yeah, I was in the same one. Man. Yeah, yeah, this guy was a Jew for 30 years. He goes, yeah. I think he's a Jew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The the best the best stolen valor I did. I sent you the tweet for it. I don't know. It's a. Uh, I was working from home. Yeah. And I had a sales job, and you guys been to um, what's that place? The, the Perry's. Perry's. You guys have been to Perry's before, where they do the pork chop special on Fridays. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Seventeen dollar pork chop. My manager said, I'm taking all of you guys out to Perry's for like a reward. And it's the day of that pork shop special. You guys have to try it. It's the best thing in the world. And he was doing that because it's cheaper yeah. than like a normal meal. It's normally 50 bucks. He talked about it all week about how we all have to get the pork chop. We all have to get the pork chop. We all have to get the pork chop. <laughs> and the, for the viewer, they put the applesauce on it. It's very nice. It's really good. I've had it before, though. I went Mission Impossible. I put on a yarmulke and showed up, and I ordered steak. <laughs> <laughs> I ordered steak and pretended to be Jewish the entire meal. And because they had never met me. I worked from home. I showed up. I was wearing a yarmulke. You were wearing grills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wore a yarmulke and sat at Perry's and enjoyed a steak, which I guess on a Friday you shouldn't be eating steak either. But no one challenged me. You shouldn't me. be working on Friday. Yeah, hey, I couldn't agree more. I'm that Jewish. I'm, <laughs> I'm definitely that type of Jewish. <laughs> My dad told us we were Jewish when we were younger because we celebrated Jewish holidays. I believed him for years. And then when we were older, he said, no, we're, he, that was just a he joke. He said, JT, we're, we, we were Jews, we were kings, <laughs> and we were Marines. <laughs> Dude, my dad does not like the stealing valor bit. <laughs> I, I told my dad after I went to Red Robins with my friends, and he was like, you're going to do that in front of the wrong group of people and get your ass kicked. And I was like, hey, maybe. 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 But, 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 if you whoop my ass and make me sue you and then make that be my career where I have to be like, yeah, dude, I pretended like I was in the army, and then an army man beat me up and I hired a personal <laughs> injury attorney and now I'm retired, do it. <laughs> Dude, do it. That would just result in other army guys beating the shit out of you. Jackpot. And consistent endless money glitch. Endless money glitch. Endless yeah. money glitch. Because here's the thing. Hey, oh. you guys hear that? If there's anyone watching right now who's like, I need to take out Afghanistan on someone, JT <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> I'm the PTSD punching bag. <laughs> Our friend Maverick, he said he was in the Navy, and I was like, oh, what is that, the gayer version of the army? And he goes, he goes you know, I could kick your ass. I was like, yeah, there's tons of gay dudes that can kick my ass. <laughs> you, think, you think kicking my ass doesn't prove my point? That's what a gay guy would say if he wanted to kick my ass. <laughs> a lot of, hey, hey, hey. A lot of groups can kick my ass. <laughs> I was like, a lot of kids. I got a jiu-jitsu where 15 year olds made me almost want to cry. You think I'm embarrassed to be scared of you? No, I'm just scared. <laughs> hey, boss, that's not exclusive to who you fuck. <laughs> that's so funny. Man, you've never stolen Valor? Uh, no. Really? Uh, You've never stolen Valor either? I've stolen, not like army Valor, but I've stolen Valor. What do you mean? So, uh, my buddy played college football at Monmouth University in New Jersey, which is right by the beach. And so, he was a freshman, and I was going with him to one of the parties. And he's like, you have to say you're on the football team, because only guys on the football team are allowed to come to this party. And I'm thinking like, okay, jerk me off, you know, just, it's, it's not real. As we're walking in, some guy is getting, like, wheeled out by these two other big football players, and he's just covered in blood. And I'm like, what the fuck happened? He goes, he wasn't a football player. And I was like, 
Oh, <laughs> fuck, dude, yo. So I, whenever anyone asked, I just said I was the kicker. Nice. Because, you know, no one really wants to fuck the kicker, but nobody wants to fuck up the kicker either. So No, you need yeah. him. Yeah. You can't ice him. You need him ready. But there was uh, there was these girls that we were hitting on, and one of the girls was like, do you know? And then she said the name of some player. I think it was like Mike Bassine. And I was like, no, who's that? And she goes, really? You're on the team, but you don't know the very best player on the team? Apparently, he was like the hot shot. I was no, like, ma'am. We play for Monmouth. No one gives a fuck. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> but I was like, I was like, oh, you know what? He actually hates me, so you should never bring me up to him. That's why I never bring up Ooh, him. Did nice. she buy it? She bought it, dude. That's insane. It fucking turned around I the whole Jersey night. I love Jersey girls. Sometimes huh? it feels yeah. like women want to be lied to. Yeah. I swear. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, I fucked that kicker last night. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. She's like, I fucked a kicker. Oh my god, he's just an Uber driver. That's actually better for me <laughs> than the kicker. Yeah, man. Okay, what have I stolen valor for? Well, I've been on. A oh, I was in a military base. I was on a naval base in Everett, Washington, and I stole a bunch of literal medals. That's way worse. I'm right? fucking with you. I didn't okay. do that. <laughs> <laughs> I stole him off this uh, guy's casket. I, there was like a, there was like a, 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 a wake. <laughs> right, it was mourning some dead pussy, <laughs> and, uh, and they had all of these coins, these challenge coins with the Punisher skull. And I said, "Ooh, dibs." <laughs> Thank you for your service, dude. I was talking to my friend the other day. I posted this thing on. Uh, Memorial Day that I was like don't forget a lot of your friends in the army don't get to go to war they have to work like shitty jobs in El Paso that's correct and my friend hit me up and he was like did I ever tell you about serving in North Carolina and I was like no I swear to god this <laughs> is true he was like yeah dude I was at the gas station with two other guys on the job in costume and they got robbed at gunpoint <laughs> and I was like do not let the terrorists find that out do not let the terrorists find out in costume in an army man truck at the gas station robbed at gunpoint Point, and they had to go back to army base and be like, hey, all our stuff's gone except the car. <laughs> yeah, I saw action. Oh, where were you at? Fallujah, Baghdad, uh, Valero. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bummer, man. I was like, do you, do you tell people you were in combat? And he's like, as a joke sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I would. Yes. If I was him, I would 100% be like, yeah, so one time I got me and these two guys out of a sticky situation. I don't really like talking about it. Don't really like talking about the gunplay stuff. <laughs> hmm. Gunplay is sexy. Oh, it's uh, if I was in the army, I'd be the key seducer. I'd be a spy, and my job would be find people in charge, man or woman. I'm a spy. I do this for the country. No, I don't want to have sex with beautiful men. My country's making me do it. But I have sex with them, and then I get all the country secrets. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm a gay honey. Pie. I'm a gay or straight, but mostly gay. It's just what the country wants me to do. <laughs> it's just the country says bath this men with really sexy mustaches. They really want me to go down on them to get, like, secrets. I and my wife my, has to watch. I tell my bride... <laughs> I tell my wife, no, it's what my country needs me. Yeah. And she's like, your country needs you almost every single night around 3 a.m. at the 24-hour sex store. I'm like, yeah, I love my country. I love it. I love it. I well, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I like the idea. That, yeah, we were robbed at a gas station. It's like, and their wives are like, why were you out of Valero at 4.30 in the morning? <laughs> 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 oh, we weren't, we weren't cruising. <laughs> we were looking for weapons of mass. <laughs> I can't believe stealing valor weapons isn't more common. Mass destruction. <laughs> Sorry, what's that now? I said I, I can't believe it's not more common. What is not common? Stealing valor. It's so common. It's a whole lane of the internet. Yeah. Dude, my favorite is the type of guys that wear the costume and then go into Macy's or some shit to try to get a discount. <laughs> Those guys are the bravest dudes in the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. That's so funny to me. <laughs> it's like everything I've done has either been like, I'm really messed up on drugs Ooh. in a plane, right? Or like, I'm trying to get a discount with two of my friends. But the guys that are like, yo, I wear this costume and I save over $400 on my kid's Christmas present every year those guys rule those guys are wow true soldiers of fortune that is insane do you think all soldiers have people stealing their valor like, yeah I don't yeah, think, I think is so. anyone like Hamas stolen yeah. valor or oh yeah yeah 
Stolen Valor. Oh yeah, I've stolen Al Qaeda Valor. I've stolen Iraqi Soldier Valor. I've stolen Valor from many, many as many as I can. Yeah, yeah. So like in Afghanistan, a guy's like, <coughs> um, uh, yeah, actually, I need a discount on this rental tux. I'm in the Taliban. <laughs> and then the, and the guy is like, where'd you fucking serve? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Um, Oh yeah, I'm about to sweat through my pants for the first time. Yeah, it's all right. No, it's actually very hot. I wanted to see. Your body just runs hotter. Yeah, I keep. What do you guys keep the house at? Sixty-seven. Whoa. Sixty-seven. Yeah. That's a meat locker. Dude. Yeah, that's pretty cold. I go seventy. Cool. Yeah. 70. During the day, I'm at seventy-four, seventy-five, and then at night, I crank it down to about seventy, seventy-one. Wow, really? Yeah. That is insane. Why do you keep it so high in the daytime? I, well, because it's just not that bad. Wow. I, I like it cold to sleep, but during the day, I can just do my shit at 74. I like, because I work from home, right? I make myself in this little cave, and I like to make it really cold, and then I put on a sweater and a beanie, and I drink hot it's coffee summer. all summer. You don't need to wear a beanie. No, I know, but in my, in, my, in my office, it's like Pacific Northwest every day. It's like 67 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> I gotta wear my I gotta wear my carpentry car hat yeah, I to my desk job. hundred percent what I'm doing in there. I'm 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 I cosplay a Portland lifestyle in my house. I get a fan. I make myself with an AeroPress, and then I put on my little I put on my little costume, and I sometimes I wear overalls. Fuck it, and then I go and I log into my computer and I go I'm an SEO expert, and I call people and I lie, and I wear flannel, and it's it's a real Portland life. You yeah, know, I it is. Yeah, I wasn't born in the wrong century. I was born in the wrong place. I was born to be a guy <laughs> that that's sucks. into like fake lumberjacking uh, sports, and I would work at a brew bar in like 2011, back when brew bars were like the cutting edge of guys like me hanging out. Excuse that, me, that's the lifestyle. I I'm reading. Lived. I'm busy reading a copy of Ethical Slut. <laughs> 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 oh man, do you want to know my new thing? Go ahead. There's this guy that I know that made fun of me for painting my nails, and he said that it was feminine. Uh huh. And I said, I said, feminine, I have a wife. I said, where, he's a Christian guy. I said, where's your wife? Aren't you having sex with women randomly like a gay man would? And it dun he didn't have a response, and I felt like I dunked on him. Dude. And I was like, your framework is so fucking broken that you called me feminine, and then I called you a slut, and you felt like a woman, and you felt bad, you hmm. idiot. Dunked on him. Yeah, you're getting, you're getting random pussy, like a homo. Like a, like a gay, I said, oh, you're having sex with strangers, what gay guys do. Gay guys go out and hook out with each other. And he was like, oh, oh. And he was like, I want to find a woman one day. And I was like, yeah, well, it's not your priority, is it? <laughs> crazy, huh? What a crazy misdirect I landed on this fool. Damn, dude. Maybe if you were better at pinning your nails, you would have been a wife. Damn, dude. Fucking bad. On guard. Damn, bro. Yeah, what, what, why don't I drive you to the Valero, huh? Get in the car. <laughs> Man, there's another Christian guy I know that was saving himself till marriage, and he's like 26. Oof. He's got married in February. Mm. I've never been more excited for someone to come. I thought about it every single day. I was like, yo, this dude's gonna fucking have pussy. This dude's gonna fucking lose his shit. It's probably the, gonna be the worst day of this girl's life, but bro, the best day of his life. When we started, when I started comedy, man, there was this guy who would wear a suit like a psycho to open mics. No, exactly what you're talking about. And it would be these outdoor open mics, and it was like May. It was like 88 degrees, 95 degrees. He would wear a full three-piece suit for a three-minute open mic, sweat his balls off, and he would do his like weird like Johnny Carson impression where he's like, in the news I saw that President Obama. Like It was like this oh, weird God. thing, and it would just tank. Just tank, dude. It was like bad, for like a different decade. Like this would have been bad in the 80s. And it was like, but but it was like 2017. And man, he was like, he had like more gray and white hairs than regular hair, yeah. you know? Like like his, his hair, like black hair, bro, he had like white eyebrows. Like he was, that's how old he was. And he told me that he was waiting till marriage. Yeah. And he was like, what, like in his 30s? I was like, brother. Yeah. I mean. You know what's crazy? Is he brought out a date one time, this crazy banging hot black girl. And I asked him, I was like, yo, his, uh, I don't want to say his name. But I asked him, I was like, yo, what happened to that girl? And he was like, ugh, wasn't a fit for me. And I was like, oh, you're just gay. You're just like a gay guy who's Catholic. That's your lifestyle. You're trapped in Catholicism yeah. to mask your, your gay shame. And 
yeah, it's like this fucking babe is here ready to fucking take that little suit yeah. tie off. Huh? She saw you at old Cold Town Theater. She loved the set. She buddy. saw him from comedy? Yeah, marry him. She, oh my God. Marry him. And it was not, I mean, he was a nice man, but Best that comedy guy. wasn't paying the bills. He actually talked a lot of shit about me and my stand up, so I loved when he quit. And I was like, oh, that's interesting that you weren't tougher or interesting enough. <laughs> Some people don't get it, though. Like, they think that that kind of old timey joke shit is funny. Like, there was a guy who, when I went to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, he literally just did prop comedy. Like, he'd be like, um, brace yourselves! And he had a neck brace on, he would take it off. And then he'd be like, uh, I just got a new computer, I'll put up windows! And he opens the jacket, and it's like a out of a window. A guy like that, you want to put like eight hits of acid and four shots of bleach in his drink and see what happens to him? No, I know. I know. What? I got you. <laughs> I want to take his reality and destroy him from the inside out. That's the type of guy I want to fucking play with the wires of it. Hey, those types of guys, you know how you can just fuck their wives right behind their back? Right, you know what I'm talking about? You know those types of fuckers? <laughs> you Destroy know, William H. Macy type. <laughs> so I saw that guy and I was like, wow, this is bad. How old was this man? He's 45. Brutal. <laughs> yeah, like old. Brutalissimo. And uh, I was with like a big group of people and one of the guys that I was with was losing his shit laughing. And then he turned to me after the show and he goes, dude, you have to book that motherfucker. Hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I swear to God. Holy fuck, dude. dude. <laughs> Yo, Europeans <laughs> suck. He goes, you're being jealous right now. <laughs> he goes, it's not like a good look, dude. Like, he was great, and you should book him because of that. Wow. Unacceptable. So sometimes those guys just succeed. Damn, dude. You know what sucks about comedy? Yeah is if it's like makes people laugh it's good comedy i think about that all the time where i've seen stuff like that but it's making people laugh and i'm like fuck legally he's so much better than that i am <laughs> in the court of law that's a better set than i'll have <laughs> you know what i mean the guy opening his like, this is a fucking window i'm like dude that guy's gonna fucking destroy that guy's gonna fucking kill dude, dude you know Happens, the fucking ah! And then he goes to the next joke and he goes, just kidding, it's a Macintosh. And he had two apples taped to his ass. Okay, that's funny. We got to admit Honestly, that. Honestly, the ass shot is pretty funny. That's pretty funny, yeah. Especially if he had those taped beforehand. Yeah, I like him. Yeah, I'm back on board. You got to book this guy. I like the idea that he's going to the grocery store and <laughs> every day. No, it's get, the ass apple guy. Every three days, he's there to get fresh produce, and he's screaming at some guy because they're in, what, Scotland, right? Is that where that festival is? He's like, no, it has to be a Macintosh <laughs> apple. <laughs> and just some asshole is like, sorry, uh, uh, I, I've got Granny Smith and Gala apples. That's all I got. Mm. There's there's two eras of stand up that I think are like just beautiful, and they're both the clap comedy era. There was a time in 2016 and 2020 where like you could just say things that were true and then get booked. You guys remember that? Yeah, of that course. That rule. Where you just get up there and be like, so the police state is uh, pretty corrupt in this country. So corrupt. I feel like I live in a feudal land. Who's the king? People be like, yeah! and just lose their shit. Man, that ruled. I wish I wish I would have been one of those guys instead of you know just talking about my butthole or trying to light my farts on Fuck, fire. Man. Lighting farts on fire is funny, right? <laughs> so funny. That will never change. Forever funny. Yeah. What? Mm -hmm. No, it is fine. Oh. I, agree with you. I was just thinking, like, I remember when I started in New York, my parents were like, you should talk about being an Irish Catholic. <laughs> We're the blacks in New Jersey. <laughs> I was like New York, Brooklyn open mics in like 2018. You know, they're like, oh, we fucking hate you. You should That's talk so about funny. being an Irish Catholic. That's so funny. That rules. God damn. That rules, man. Oh, Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy kid. Not everybody has five siblings. <laughs> Man, I grew up fundamentalist, right? Super Christian parents. And the first time I had a set videotaped, I was like 17 or 18. It was at the Punchline Sacramento. Mm -hmm. And in that set, I talked about trying cocaine, losing my virginity, and trying heroin. And my friend put it online, and my mom saw, and she said she stayed up all night crying. <laughs> she said she stayed up. She goes, I was up all night weeping, weeping about your sins, just weeping <laughs> about them. Uh, well. 
But the video that you put out of me stealing Def Valor, yeah. my mom loved that video. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you guys haven't, look up JT Kelly's stand up uh, with Arrogant Menace Comedy. It's doing numbers. Yeah. It's actually very, it's amazing. It looks great. Jimmy filmed it, edited it. This guy wrote and performed it. And again, it's Stealing Valor. Oh, I haven't told you about the autistic Stealing Valor? Not yet. That one's one of the worst ones. Have you ever earned Valor? No, not once in my life. I have not earned respect, Valor. I've never worked hard either. What have you done to earn Valor, Jim? I mean, anything. I uh, graduated uh, high school. Went to that football party? Went to that football party. Uh, that background number? I don't know. Um, what, did you have, what did you do to earn Valor, Sam? Oh, I told a lot of people I was Puerto Rican. <laughs> <laughs> And they were like, okay, Poppy, <laughs> come to this cookout. <laughs> and I did. And I did. I had Goya beans. Go ahead. What, was you, what did you do to steal all Oh, the so when I first started drinking and going to open mics, I was just the worst punisher, most annoying guy ever. I, I still am even worse when I drink. I just talk at people. I, it was like my third or fourth time meeting this guy, this comedian, and his girlfriend was incredibly hot. And I made a joke, and I said, oh, my God you're so hot, why are you with him? And she <laughs> loved that joke. Sure. She thought it was so funny, and he laughed too, and I told it pretty much the same type of joke a few different times. All night long. Yeah, and getting drunker and drunker and being like, you know. And no, she, but for real, you fuck him? <laughs> yeah, really. Oh my God, really. Almost that, yeah, I can't even pretend it goes that far off. Get the fuck out of here. You let him blast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was horny, <laughs> and I was like, this girl's so cute, and uh, finally this guy looks at me and goes, dude, what the fuck's your problem? And I was like, oh, what do you mean? And it kind of clicked. I was like, oh, I'm not being funny. I'm just being a dick. I'm being disrespectful. Really, though? And I, I know it sounds so fucking stupid not to realize that. And so because I felt so stupid, I said, I was diagnosed with autism. Oh, my God. Which I wasn't. And I said, I'm so sorry. Thank you for telling me I won't do it again. And he was like, uh, okay, man. And I could kind of tell it was off. Yeah. And, like, we weren't really friends after that. We saw each other at open mics for years. He moves to New York. I forget about how <laughs> oh, I know who this is. Yeah. That's so funny. I see him in New York. He's from Sacramento, right? I see him in New York years later. After I'd moved to Austin, I see him in like 2015, oh, 2016. Oh, who'd you think it was? <laughs> okay, we'll tell later. <laughs> I see him and I go, I go up to him. I was like, oh my God, do you remember me? And he was like, yeah, dude, I remember you. And I was like, I want to apologize. I was like, I, I was like, I'd love to say I've changed. I haven't, but I just recognized, <laughs> like, that was a shitty thing to do. And what was even shittier is I pretended to be autistic when I'm not. And I, I don't know why I did that. I'm, I'm really, really sorry. And he goes, Yeah, man, you've actually gotten drunk and given me this apology a few times. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So that was probably the worst time I stole Valor as far as like my feelings go. I'd like to say that I was a better man, but here I am, able to look you in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> no. Not autistic. Not autistic. And tell at you all. that I am not I have not grown. Yeah, I have not grown. In fact, I would pretend to be autistic again if I thought it would, you know, serve Give me. me. <laughs> yeah. And I, I would steal Valor again if I thought it would serve not me. Not growing up, just getting older. Yeah. I don't think I'd steal Valor at this age, to be honest. <laughs> with, with that story... <laughs> Aren't I a stinker? <laughs> I didn't know why I said that. I didn't know why I said that. Oh, I wouldn't do it now. <laughs> I would do it in a minute if I wanted. <laughs> Give it a good opportunity. I would say I was an admiral in the Navy, baby. I would. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of you just telling nieces and nephews like that are like two years old. You know I surf two tours. Absolutely. Absolutely I will. Oh, that's so funny. You're asking a question. No, what was my I totally forgot my question. I was just thinking like if you stole Valor with that guy and he no 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 he you apologize multiple times to this fucking guy right yeah apparently you would think that he would just <laughs> learn to take the apology better be more memorable at receiving an apology yeah that's on him yeah, yeah exactly yeah <laughs> fuck this guy his girlfriend was way too hot for him <laughs> i'll never be offended by that <laughs> is that a ridiculous thing to get offended by <laughs> What no, do you mean? I mean, he'll try to fuck like, your girlfriend. You know, someone's <laughs> like, yo, your girlfriend's way too hot for you. It's like, yeah, I agree. But you also, still I was can't over 300 pounds and high on heroin at the time. Yeah. Yeah. So honestly, it's his fault. Yeah. Well, I was like, I was, I mean, I still am the type that's like, you know, gross guy, 
But I, I was like a very intimidating, not like scary tough, but more like, oh, this don't leave my purse around this guy. This guy's so scary and gross looking. <laughs> yeah, there's no coat check at this party for a reason. <laughs> 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 Man, Ugh, I hope he's good. I hope he still does comedy. I hope he's successful. I, I don't. And <laughs> if your girlfriend is watching this, I'm allowed to have friends. <laughs> I hope he's married to a different woman. Uh, I hope he married her. She was so pretty, and honestly, doesn't seem that nice to him because she really egged me on on that joke that clearly bothered him. So, <laughs> hope they're not together anymore. Yeah, I hope so. I like I how I found a way for it to be either of theirs' fault. She egged me on. He should have taken the apology better. I love this. I knew I was the victim. I knew I was the good guy in this story somehow. I just had to talk long enough to make it true. I had to talk, yeah. I had to work it out with my boys and figure out I'm the good guy in the story. Exactly. You were with the, yeah, with your, with your advisors. Yeah, my trusted advisors. <laughs> Man, damn. You know, in some states, it's actually illegal to steal valor. Arizona, I think, is the only state. It's an state. actual crime. It's an actual crime. God, what a funny state. I'll be honest. <clears throat> I think that that is, like, bad. I think it's free speech. I think that I was, the Constitution gave me the right to stand in the city and say, I fought for your freedoms yes, in sir. Afghanistan. That's correct. <laughs> That's what the Constitution Preach. protects for me. <laughs> He's, he's on the hood of a car. He goes, well, when you really think about it, how many of the soldiers over there actually fought for freedom? <laughs> <laughs> how my freedoms get over in Afghanistan? How are my freedoms over there? <laughs> a lot of them fought for a Dodge Challenger. <laughs> Your Honor, a lot of them fought for a Hellcat. <laughs> Hellcat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gave them the option of a Hemi engine or freedom. They'd go, oh, oh, that's a that's a meme right there. It's a Hellcat with a stick and a box <laughs> and a string. Oh, they'll take it every time. <laughs> <laughs> you put a big girl in there that wants to get married, buddy. Buddy, <laughs> it's game over. Will she cheat on him? Most definitely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because I'm on heroin. <laughs> and I'll do it. And I'll apologize to him several times for several years. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. I fucked your wife in your car. <laughs> in your Hellcat. That you <laughs> sorry I keep getting drunk and making you relive this experience over and over and over. That's gotta be the worst. Imagine joining the military for a Hellcat and then your wife fucks some dude that's on heroin. An open mic. Yeah. And and he just goes Hellcat. on his podcast with his buddies and talks about it. I just seen... laughs and laughs saying, I wore the costume, I got the discount, and I fucked the woman. <laughs> <laughs> No PTSD, <laughs> just a good life. <laughs> His mother's like, I was up praying all night for you. People are praying for him. Yeah. You know, he did all the deeds, and people are still praying mm -hmm. for him. My mom, the most powerful Ain't intercessor for in me. the whole kingdom of the Lord, praying for me to I get everything I want. That's why I say, look out. I'll have I'll add this to my mom's prayer list, and she talks directly to the Lord. <laughs> She, how do I know Jesus talks in a southern accent? Because I've heard his voice through my mama. <laughs> Damn, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love Jesus. I love the great state of Texas. And I love my mom. And I love every branches of this here American service, including the three or four I served in before. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if Jesus was what, but I know he was from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> we need more messiahs. In, okay. in the 80s and 90s, every few years, a guy would come up and be like, hey, I'm Jesus returned. Mm. Jesus hasn't returned in the past few years in a popular way. What's going on with that? What's he up has, with that? He just has a shit Instagram presence. Yeah, mm. dude. There needs to be one pop. If we got one good popular new Jesus on Instagram, we could change the world. Bad branding. Yeah, yeah. Liver King, he was close, but. Damn, dude. Did Liver King say he was the second coming? No, but I mean, I want a hot Jesus this time. Fucking shredded <laughs> beefcake of a Jesus. Oh, you were into, you were into the king, huh? You dude. like Liver King? El King? <laughs> I wanted my fucking Jesus uh, moist and fucking thick. What's, you know, they pump uh, water into meats in grocery stores? No. I'm yeah. Okay with that. That's what Liver King looked like. Man. Just way at creatine. Yeah, is that water. what it was? It's he was all natural. Oh, yeah, no, he was, he was not. Ah, uh, no, that was his thing. <laughs> no. He was all natural. <laughs> you guys even watched his videos? I he just, lived by the primal tenets. I just remember that being like a, a news cycle where it was like, 
podcaster Joe Rogan who's openly on HGH calling out other podcaster who lying about being on HGH <laughs> yeah. and just thinking aren't we like in a war right now <laughs> <laughs> this is the top concern <laughs> man yeah are we at war we were at the time we okay. were still in Afghanistan Oh, thank God we got oh, out of there. God. We said, we don't need any more poppy. <laughs> we said, actually, we're moving on to fentanyl. We're good off Afghanistan now. Bye. Bye. <laughs> we got infrastructure for other drug houses. You ever done the fent? Oh, yeah. I oh. smoked fentanyl off a fucking pouch, dude. Dude, when I first moved to Austin, had this neighbor I used to do heroin with. He took this patch of fentanyl. It was like the old school way. It's how everyone got fentanyl in like 2014, 2015. Dude would take this gel off the off the patch that you put on you for like a cancer patient, and we would just freebase it. And it was the highest I've ever been in my life. Now that I know what I know about fentanyl, it's insane I didn't die. Yeah. I smoked fentanyl with this guy, honestly, only a handful of times. But we were neighbors. I remember his girlfriend went to jail for a while. And then his dog bit my dog. But. Damn. <laughs> Damn. And then I, <laughs> then, I just, then I looked at his car for too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here's the thing. I wouldn't do heroin anymore. But I'd still steal some power if I needed to. <laughs> that part has changed. I don't do heroin anymore, but that little itch that I get, that little itch that I need to scratch that makes me say, say you're a second lieutenant in the Air Force, that will never, never go unscratched. God damn. Do you want to, uh, do you want to go to the, hop into the story? Where are we at time-wise? We're at 30, Four, 40? 48 minutes. I, I knew we were over 45. Yeah. Oh, damn. We, we could just ride this bitch out and have fun. Yeah, I say we just have fun. All right. Um, I'm glad I read that for four hours today. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> no, Sam. I no, only read I the do. first. Actually, I read all the articles on the doc. No, I read like I read for like two hours. I'm just a slow reader. Mm -hmm. And I got sidetracked. They found this one story of this magician in your hometown. Where, where are you from again? Sparta, New Jersey. Oh, okay. Never mind. What, was, what hometown? I thought I thought you were from, uh, it was from uh, Morris, New Jersey. What, Morris Town? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, New Jersey's small, dude. So we drive all over the place. Like there my brother a, goes to high school in Morristown. The 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 the, uh, uh, the mayor of Morristown. Yeah. Her husband, uh, known magician in the area, was found with a lot of child porn. Actually, he performed at this place in my town, so I do remember him. I actually got a message about that. <laughs> no shit. Yeah. The, I don't From know him. Why there's so many. <laughs> He's like, I miss your birthday party. <laughs> yeah, about his newsletter. Actually, <laughs> I saw you doing comedy. <laughs> Dude, my, my high school guidance counselor tried to fuck me after I graduated. Damn. Male or female? Male. Slid, Not cool then. Slid in the DMs. Really? What did he say? He'd be like, hey, how are you? You look good. And no like, way. Yeah, I was like, no. Really? Not Bro. How old, right after graduation? Yeah, this dude was pretty funny, though, because he had narcolepsy. So sometimes he would bring you into his office, and then he'd fall asleep. So you'd just take out your phone and start, like, going through Instagram and chill out, and then he'd wake up eventually, and you'd just be like, yes, you were saying next semester I should take, and he goes, well, yes, next semester you should, and then you'd miss class. It was yeah. fucking sick. I worked with a guy with narcolepsy one time. It's the best disease. Hilarious disease. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 he would, I worked with a guy, and he'd be driving one of those little mini trucks that we'd use on site. We were working like music festivals and stuff. He would just fall asleep. You had to like grab the emergency brake. Funniest thing I ever saw, he fell asleep at lunch one time and we all stood up and left him at the lunch table. <laughs> Hilarious. We all moved to the lunch table next to us and watched him wake up and like go, he was, oh, fuck you guys. That was so funny. Damn, Rest dude. in peace, Tom. He died? I, yeah, he died. Oh. He did a bunch of cocaine his whole life, had narcolepsy. I actually started to think that his whole narcolepsy thing was just like, oh, you literally stay up every night doing cocaine all night and you're morbidly obese. Damn. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Or he was trying to take care of himself by, with using cocaine as a uh, medication. That's the other theory. I mean, I had a roommate with narcolepsy, and he would take Neovigil and Ritalin, and I would take it too. I would just take it in the bottle. I would come home, and then he's like, what are you up to right now? I'm like, oh, I took five of your medication. <laughs> he's like, don't do that. <laughs> I need that. Otherwise, I'll fail out. I'm like, well, look, we're gonna be both going to be up all day. So we might, as well, we might as well do something with the day, huh? Don't get sleepy, buddy. <laughs> and then he would be prescribed GHB to drug himself to sleep because he'd be on so many uppers. So then I would buy the GHB from him, and I would take this pill called New Vigil. And it would keep me up for 48 hours on one pill. And then I would line up some lines of uh, powder. And then uh, and, uh, and I would buy this Patron used to have this tequila Patron. God damn. This is like a fucking Breaking it was, Bad episode. It was an espresso. <laughs> they made an espresso tequila back in the day. So I'd pour a couple shots. And then bop, bop, bop. So i get a little caffeine, a little booze, a lot of stimmies. 
a little bit of cocaine, and then I would take the GHB. We would have, we'd, I'd get, I'd put a little cylinder, I mean a syringe in there, spray it into my mouth so I could measure out the milliliters. It tasted like salt water, and then the the stimulants would fight the GHB, so I would stay awake and I would just hallucinate the prettiest lights I've ever seen in my fucking eyes. Yeah. Just let the devil and God rage inside. That sounds you. horrible. I'll be honest. Yeah, we used to call it yo-yoing, where you could see how many days you could stay up without <gasps> sleeping, and how many times in those days you could go up and then drug yourself to go down and then back up. So we'd be like, all right, uh. let's take like two Xanax bars and see what that does. And then you get low and you're like, oh fuck, dude, my heart was slowing down. Like that's how fucking, that's how like, uh, that's how Gucci man went to the hospital. So then we would just like take snort of Ritalin and go up. Man. I, I did very similar stuff, and I don't know why. And we turned out great. Yeah. <laughs> the first time I did prescription pills was because a girl I knew said, I just started smoking weed, and she said, oh, do you know what's like weed but better? Percocets. She, and I was, said, she oh. wasn't kidding. Yeah, for real. <laughs> and like very, really quickly, it was just like that to where I'm like, yeah, now I'm water processing Vicodins to make it into a gel and smoking it. And it's like so many people oh, I know oh, were we, just using hard drugs. Oh, we would cold water filter uh, yeah. Tylenol with the codeine three, mm -hmm. it would have 300 milligrams of Tylenol or aspirin in it, and then three milligrams of codeine. So then you would cold water filter the aspirin out and just keep the synthesized codeine, mm -hmm. and you could just snort that. You'd so. be able to get T3s in Canada. So you'd meet people that would have, you know, stocks of it because yeah. they could get it over the counter over in Canada. Counter. I did drugs to avoid schoolwork. This is like a <laughs> lot of fucking, you gotta measure it and then you fucking dilute it into, no, no, no. You ever seen We got rings? high and watched Superbad 29 <laughs> times in a row. We watched the movie Superbad 29 times in a row. Yeah, Sam guess and I were what? just trying Still to kill ourselves. the same ending every single time. You uh, to kill yourself? Yeah, you, you were just having fun. We were just not recognizing that we were suicidal and just uh, testing testing God himself. No, we, they we, put me in a room with a bunch of immigrants, and not all of them spoke English, so mm -hmm. we would watch it 29 times, so they would all get the jokes by the end of the 29th <laughs> watch. My friend, his name is Lokesh, he learned new jokes every watch. Oh, man. <laughs> I envy Lokesh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> what a beautiful mind. What a fantastic way to experience Low cash, the world. he used to always, he would eat two things. He said every meal had to be sweet and sour, so he would eat deli meat and gummy worms. <laughs> Bro. Yeah. What Bro culture would. is that? Uh, dude, who knows? I mean, he was fucking... Uh, downs. <laughs> yeah. That's a cool-ass life, dude. Culture Close. of a Downs. <laughs> Every meal needs to be sweet and sour. That's an incredible line to live by. He's, he's, he's got a wine glass. <laughs> a wine glass filled with the fucking bang energy drink. <laughs> Every meal must be sweet and sour. <laughs> Jimmy... What did you put? Slide the DVD of. They slide the, the DVD in. He's rolling beef jerky up into like fruit of the fruit. <laughs> yeah. like roll ups. He's making himself a little delicious blunt. No, he's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He has an exacto knife that he cuts open the Oscar Mayer bag. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> yeah, he's got he's got the dolly he's <laughs> pressing it down. <laughs> so uh, uh, some uh, sommelier walks up and he takes uh, like a. Uh, a towel, throws it over, it's a monster energy drink. He goes, sir, 2024. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember like the, the white, the white monster energy drinks like the, the with the bandana? The low you know, carb? Yeah, yeah, the, whatever that shit is. They're like, oh yes, that was a very good year. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That was, Hell yeah. That was I think, college, dude. I think that's been the show for today. Yeah. Hey, yeah, we've, we've missed each other. We haven't seen Jimmy in weeks. Two, weeks. three weeks, yeah. Yeah, this was just a reunion. We didn't talk about the news once, but I hope you all had fun. Hope you had fun. See you on the internet. And if you're in the army, so am I. Yeah.